White Trash and Rednecks. The following contest is a non-titles knockout handicap match. Scheduled for one fall. What that mean is for on one. <laughs> Introducing first. What do you think about that? Sean so, so <laughs> Jones. Sean so Jones. Bolt. Rush. Ever slept around these How am I supposed to know what their names are? <laughs> Welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast, filmed in glorious Grapple Vision and encoded with blast processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay per view by pay per view. This is your host, the 12 time backrake champion, Jay Hunter, the 12th member of the NWO V1, Waka Wohei Hey, and the 12 time Golden Nogger Award winner, OC. They do. See, everyone's too lazy to check and tally it up. <laughs> <laughs> Proof them wrong. <laughs> It's OSW 122 Main Event Mafia Impact, and it's coming up right mm. now. You don't win friends with salad. 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 Welcome, noggers. Happy days are here. Again. Oh, I stole your thing. You oh, son of a 122 bitch. 122 episodes in. <laughs> Still haven't sorted it. It's okay, because the last time out, I forgot to do the... <laughs> so, you know, it's, you all say it. it's all good. I've got a solid... Yeah. It's something I wanted to bring up with you, you know, when it's appropriate. Yeah. But I've got a new award for you. No. This week's Most Naked Man in Wrestling oh, yes. Oh. Yes. goes to Tai Chi, New Japan's KOPW champion. Check him out. Okay. Oh, like that's intention. He's doing that on purpose, right? Isn't he? He's very naked. So he's wearing the belt over his speedos. He's doing that on purpose. No elbow pads, no wrist tape. Yes. He doesn't have a cap which takes it down about three or four notches. So I'm still saying Eric Young is the most naked man in the history of wrestling, but... This guy is, he's top 10. He's coming up. He's coming yeah. up the ladder. Yeah, he's top well, 10. You know, you, like, we may need to have black bars over his knees and his elbows here. <laughs> <laughs> he's very naked. <laughs> Just quick shout out. YouTube comments are hilarious. I want to thank everyone who takes their time out to write and post their comments, including ones that cut straight to the truth. Kathy Colcun6791 says, OOC is coolest. Yep. With respect to the animation on The Hobbit 2, where OSC books himself as Gandalf, Jay Cortinas 13 says, Mr. OSC is so modest with his casting ambitions. <laughs> <laughs> I am the best modest person ever. Yes, and I love when people leave timestamps as their YouTube comments, because I'm always wondering what they've bookmarked. Slice of Gabagool stamps simulcast raw at 4221. We'll have a quick look. Mm. And Kid takes a pump handled slam, a proper one, not Road Dog's piece of shit slam. Oh, where he bums you before he can make the bully. That was like Yete era, wasn't it? The bombing. Yeah, uh, No Way Yet, yeah, 2001. Yeah, episode 50. Yeah. Uh, episode 50? That's a long ass time ago now, isn't it? He really bums him there. Like, I. <laughs> I don't remember it being that. He gave them a bit of a raw dog and doesn't he? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used to be like he might do one maximum Pump. two thrusts, but that was like, way. <laughs> Between that and most naked man who <laughs> are wearing clothes, yeah, yeah. like it's just, you put it together. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. The following message has been brought to you by the Main Event Mafia. Episode start. 
The following is brought to you by the main event mafia. Waka waka NWO intro. The main event mafia has brought smiles to millions across the globe through honesty, ferocity, and big Kev, plain old hard work. <laughs> Kevin Nash. It's so funny, so tongue in cheek. Mm, fun, disingenuous propaganda package that is directed by the main event mafia. It works in kayfabe because in kayfabe, the members of the main event mafia don't think that they are the bad guys, and they think that what they're doing is just. And it needed to happen because TNA has a lack of respect. Okay, I'm all set here. I got my headphones. I got my monitor, and I got my new office. Cool open! Kurt Angle is in Mick Foley's chair. Jim Cornette storms in, but he is seemingly helpless. Can't stop Kurt from taking over the show. Kurt, he's directing traffic. See, Mick's not here, and apparently that's all it takes. So, it's a main event mafia impact tonight. Steve and Steve, at your stations? Check. Three, two, Two, one. Action. It's Main Event Mafia Impact! January 29th, 2009, taped three days ago from the HD Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida. In front of 1,100 fans with a rock solid 1.6 million fans watching. FYI, TNA's peak this year would be a 1.97 on April 2nd. Wow. What's the main event that night, you ask? Aha, uh-huh. Sting and Joe wrestling for 102 seconds. Ah. Jeez. April 2nd, 2009 yeah. was the highest rated impact of the year. Yeah. That was the impact. OC was on Just Saying. Really? Uh, yeah. Second, oh my God. Just we'll Saying. So we have to do it. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. It ends in a DQ. <laughs> <laughs> One minute 42. My God. Commentators tonight are not Don West and Iron Mike Tanay. Not yet, anyway. It's the historic, iconic, paradigmatic Chet Lemon and Black Snow. Chet is like, Pyro Man. Blow your load. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call that? I believe it's a pyro man. Blow your load. Blow your load, dude. <laughs> Kevin Nash and Booker T's one night commentary alter egos, Chet Lemon and Black Snow. Oh my God. <laughs> this is it. I, I went into this thinking, is it as good as I remember? Because I remember at the time we all watched it individually met up a couple of weeks later for the paper or whatever it was and we were all like did you see that episode holy shit that was incredible and we, we go through it but this show was made by Black Snow this is the Black Snow show yeah there are other highlights but if it, without him the whole thing would have fallen apart yeah got to be a big show tonight Man of it Mafia did just what they said they were going to do they took over the show what do you think about the show tonight what do you think about this big lineup well they got contourage versus Odie being a handicap match oh man you got Petey William versus Matt Morgan what do you think about Matt Morgan he's a big guy he's a big guy Petey's got to have a hand behind his back in that one also the legend champion Booker T will be in action versus TNA's finest the referee what are their names uh, Rudy Charles and Andrew oh man but this, this big main event matchup tonight the fat boys are back Chris hey, Morgan D the human beatbox better known as Team 3D will be taking on the icon Steve but right now we're gonna kick it to the lovely the lovely Charmel more lovely more beautiful than the Queen of Sheba Charmel is standing by right now with OD Dastardly B this is the lovely Charmel and I'm here with ODB. Backstage, cut the Charmel with ODB and without audio revelations. You know, I'm, like, oh, I'm doing pretty well, how are you? <laughs> uh, ooh, we got 32-inch TVs and three of them. Wow, splashing out there, Dixie. <laughs> oh my God, we are cooking tonight. ODB, very, very strong character. Heavy, drinky, trailer, trashy, tomboy. Loads of fun. She can't remember Raisha Saeed's name, so calls her... So, uh, yeah, Kong, this one, Taliban, get over, I'll take it all <laughs> on. <laughs> Me against King Kong, Godzilla, Taliban, and Queen D. Queen D? Queen D's nuts! She makes a pass at Charmel's bodyguard, citing, I'm drunk, I'm horny, and I'm ready to kick some ass. I don't need any help with my handicap match. I've got two good friends here. Bam! Uh, Jack and Jin. Bam! I was like... 
great. She's loads of fun. ODB should be insufferable, but she's not. She's just fun. She made it work. That's it. And we, we all thought she was great. Yeah. And looking back now, I still think she's great. This was one of the highlights of the show for me, this segment with ODB. I thought it was hilarious. She was underpushed and underused, yeah, yeah. definitely. Coming to a truck stop near you. One of the nastiest bitches in wrestling history. One dirty bitch, ODB. This show. <laughs> it was like, what's the next thing? Scott Steiner is the ring announcer. I can't believe they just let him run wild on this. There's no way they gave him any guidelines. They just said, go out there and be funny. I and don't think they said They probably that. just said, go, do it as straight as you can. Yeah. Don't mess up. Just yeah. <laughs> as serious as I possible. I think it was more like that. Yeah. I don't, he was definitely not trying to be funny here. He's just effortlessly funny. It was brilliant. Steiner, he's magic here. He doesn't know anyone's name in the Kong Tourage besides Kong. So he's like, so, so Joe. But he knows ODB. And he just shouts a one dirty batch. <laughs> great. When he was like, yeah, here's a so no so so yo so no. he's like, God damn it, I don't know their names because I ain't slept with any of them. Mate. I wonder what those girls who were waiting to walk through the curtains like if they were like, you fucking dick. Of course they were, yeah. But, but it's, it's hilarious. Very fucking funny. It but is ODB funny. be like, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, and then he'd say, well, you can't get angry. I'm saying that I didn't sleep with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting you over he being just, chased, you know? He just won HR there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Four on one tornado rules against ODB. It's tornado rules as Raisha doesn't have to tag to get in. Nashi and Bucky on commentary tonight. Holy shit. Nash. Oh, so funny in this match, lads. Just line after line. ODB comes out and uh, Nash is like, it's a man, baby. I'm like, oh my God. Rocket Kong tags in and he goes, look, it's a giraffe. (laughs) More of a gazelle. He's he's actually mean. Like, Booker is just having fun, but Nash is a bit mean in this. It's definitely like mean things, you know. know? And then Booker's like, oh, Raisha coming in. She's got some of that red glitter all over. And we know that that's used to blind opponents. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's so good. Like, no comment on her wrestling ability. Kong's turn now, and ODB surprisingly gets in some offense. Heels aren't having it, and beat her down four on one. Implant buster, and bam! Good try, ODB, but only lasts 328. Right there, Kong's gonna finish it, though. Kong's gonna hit it with that Kong ball. Oh! Caught the leg right there on the ropes, too. Could've, could've tore ACL, took it. Man! Yeah, putting the Kong Taraj, or as uh, Big Papa Pump calls him, Kong Fucius. Yeah, hey. Kong Fucius. <laughs> oh, he buries the roster, by the way, but it's hilarious. Yeah. So so it's justified, I think. There's a charm to it. Yeah. Can you imagine being Nashi or Booker there, watching Steiner in the ring, and just laughing your head off, but you, you, you really want to laugh at him, but at the same time, you don't want to get your head kicked in? You have to make him think you're laughing with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You definitely don't want to piss him off. Did, so Black Snow is doing, I would say, 90% of the commentary work. I, I feel that... Uh, I think Black Snow is doing 90% of the commentary work. <laughs> he wouldn't let anyone get a word in it. <laughs> but, it, it but it works. It it's works. Amazing. And like, I do feel that Chet wanted to say more, but then was like, actually, I'll just take the night off and let Black Snow do everything. He's getting the same amount of money yeah. either way. So yeah. from a Kevin Nash point of view, this is like a double night off, yeah. you know? Because he couldn't wrestle anyway. Uh, he was meant to wrestle in the tag match in the main event of Genesis. But halfway through the show is when they were like, oh, Kevin Nash won't be here. He has a staph infection in his elbow and he's having surgery. Ooh, and you'll have to wait to find out who replaced them maybe after the show? Of course, of course. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're setting it up. Long term booking, long term booking. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> How many Steve's floors are on the above eject- us? There's three floors. Right? <laughs> uh, Can you make it through? No, it only Do you have gets a helmet, two floors. <laughs> the helmet's only graded for two floors, Steve. This is my production, oh, not yours. Oh, calm down. Fine, fine. Please. Do whatever you want. 
Backstage, JB tries to reason with Kurt and get him to return to normalcy. Kurt accusingly rebuffs, saying, ever since Karen left, you've been acting funny thinking JB has a crush on him, which leads to a load of great backstage vignettes. My favourite still the tanning bed episode. Do you remember this one? Oh, mm-hmm. it's so funny. Where mm-hmm. JB looks for an interview with Kurt and he's on his tanning bed in his Speedos and tanning goggles. And he's like, great looking at my package. <laughs> <laughs> 19th July, 2017. Nice. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, Borash is like, hey, you know, uh, I don't have a thing for Karen, you know, bros before hoes. And Kurt... I do have special feelings for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. You creep me out. Well, not like that. I'm gonna find my stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me. Have you seen my stuff? What? What, you've never seen a guy in his underwear? Probably not. <laughs> Don't laugh at my jokes just on that impact like i love the gimmick the gimmick of the show is like he's walking around in his red posing pouch someone steals his clothes so he has to call a locker room meeting whilst like almost in the buff and he's standing on the seat in in the locker room so his junk is at (laughs) eye level with everyone else and then he's like shark boy what are you laughing at me he's like well he's in a mask with a mouth on (laughs) <laughs> and he just batters him it's that's really so, clever comedy yeah, to be yeah, fair yeah. the guns in that i was just looking at them they are dying they're just like oh. <laughs> you know contorting their face so they don't laugh you know can you imagine if the guns were working in wwe on the day that vince mcmahon was walking towards the limo that had the bomb in it and all the wrestlers had to act like sad and yeah, yeah, solemn yeah, yeah. Yeah. can you imagine if you had the two of them there just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Would they, have been amazing. They pulled a Paul London. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, was <laughs> 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 uh, oh, oh, buddy, uh, the way the end of that is that uh, Samoa Joe has his gear and because he's got two belts and Kurt Angle has two belts, oh, you can have it all back uh, if we have a match to join all the belts. Can't you see I'm busy? Hey, were you looking at my package? No, I wasn't looking at your package. You were looking at my package. Don't look at my package. That is actually a different impact because there's another one with a tanning bed where he is tagging with the beautiful people and like he goes off backstage and just Angelina just gets in the tanning bed and he comes in and says, hey, what, what's going on? And it's like, yeah, I, w- I want to tan my boobs. Like, And Kurt is like, what are you doing? That's mine. Get over there. And he opens it. Screw your boobs. <laughs> Wait, what? Kurt? Screw your boobs. Let's go. We have a match. No music videos tonight, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a tidy, you know, we freed up like seven minutes. There are <laughs> music videos. What is oh, they? Oh, it's, it's the, we haven't got a band. It's just like generic rock music. Yeah, it's like, here's music, a like, like yeah, yeah. 30 second clip with yeah. AJ doing stuff. Yeah, spots. we're just filling time. It's yeah. cool. Din, 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 sting. AJ. Devon. And you know, like the other time filler are the interviews with ODB, Mark Morgan. They're also time fillers, but I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, oh, was finding... that one with uh, Shelley talking about Kiyoshi? Or was that no, next week? I think I, no. I that. Okay, so no. it was week, yeah. probably next week. Okay. Oh, great. Can't wait to hear it. Oh, nice. So, so <laughs> 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 beat by beat. Shelley, you know, he, 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 like? he, he stands up, food? he goes to the curtain, he pries <laughs> open the curtain, walks through the curtain, left foot, left foot right, right foot, left, left, left right foot, right 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 yeah, stop, pose, look, <laughs> take a breath, there we go, yeah. <laughs> Solid review. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, I enjoyed getting to know the wrestlers a bit more because obviously it was completely OOC, uh, which of course, you know, I enjoy. Out of character. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was fast. I thought Matt Morgan really put over how proud he is. He's come from a background where he was diagnosed with ADD and he came back from that and finished half his class. Interesting stuff. You know, he, he was taking this seriously. So I appreciate it. Is it proud? Proud. Make a daddy proud. <laughs> proud. <laughs> proud. <laughs> You're going to be so proud. 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 Get the fuck out of the way! Charmel is backstage. She's canvassing the refs before they get thrown to the wolves. They're fighting her husband two on one. 
Rudy, 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 Rudy. Thank you. Uh, well, Mrs. T. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an accomplished amateur wrestler and when backed into a corner I come out fighting and then the other lad who no one remembers Andrew Thomas he's less confident saying it, it's Booker T you know we're done ring announcer Scott Steiner shares the sentiment oh yeah he says no chances because they're a bunch of candy asses because the two referees have no chances because they're a bunch of candy asses so it's Booker versus two referees, two officials. Referee Andrew with a great open mouth gawking in disbelief, impending terror. It's great. Yeah. Rudy will go first. Small head of steam. Jiggly, jiggly, <laughs> boom. And just Booker starts dismantling Rudy. Do you think it's done on commentary here? He takes over from Chet. He didn't from sound Snow. like I thought he was going to sound at all. Like he just sounds like a bloke. Yeah. He doesn't sound like a big bombastic mental wrestler. And he was like, uh, hand or foot, hand or foot. <laughs> I did like that, though. <laughs> hey, you got the hand. Because if it was Steiner in the ring, he'd be like, oh, well, both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> punch <laughs> kick. The old punch kick. The old kick punch. Look at another offensive move. It's going to be hand or foot. Hand or foot. Hand or foot. And foot. Yes. Oh, this is what a shot. Like- uh, by the way, one of my highlights of the show was when Black Snow got up. Yes. You know, walking away from the commentary desk. And then Chet Lemon was like, Booker T! Booker T is here! Haven't seen him all night! He just showed up! <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. It was great, wasn't yeah. it? It's like my, my colleague Black Snow leaving the announce booth, leaving me solo. Oh my god, there's Booker T! Booker T just showed up for the first time tonight! Wow! Legends champion Booker T in the house. The king of the jungle kicks to the belly welly and follows with a scissors kick. Kurt may JB sell some Made of It Mafia merch <laughs> just before this. It looks like he's literally doing it because he has a little tray there, shots for 850. Many hats, lads. Many hats. <laughs> Jeremy Borash yeah. won this company. Oh, I guarantee if you were in the crowd, you could have bought one off. Yeah. $35 for a t-shirt. Worth every penny. But you do get it from JB. So Yeah. Steiner shoes him away. <laughs> he goes over to the commentary booth. Steiner shoes him away saying, tell your story walking, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Are they selling fast? Uh, tell your story walking, bitch. I'll take a couple of shots. Hand or foot again. Hand or foot. Hand or foot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor Andy. Two refs battered. Booker considers plugging Earl as well. <laughs> and, and then Nash chimes in with well he did screw Brett <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant <laughs> they just they don't care no. and it's great no. he's going for three referees now I don't know if anybody knows this but Earl did screw Brett that's just <laughs> <laughs> you, you had it in with uh, Earl Hebner didn't you yeah so Earl was there doing his referee job you know Manchester yeah. in Manchester so, you know, everyone was like, you, you screw Brett, you screw Brett. So I just shouted, you know, I, I I was just abusing him in a friendly, you know, the kind of very kayfabe kind of way. He had the shirt, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, the, the I screw takes Brett. Off. No, it's like the damn right I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it was it was all in good spirits. But yeah. he, he walked out, he looked at me very sad faced, like disappointed that me, OOC, would be giving out to him. By the way, at the time, there was no OSW. He didn't know who I was. Maybe. Right now, he <laughs> doesn't know who I am. <laughs> he definitely did it back then. Maybe he was a big E-fed guy, and he was a bit salty <laughs> that you uh, politics to win the belt, you know? I love it, Steve. We're yeah. going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Going with yeah. that. That's it. Yeah. 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 Well, do you remember what you said? Was it like, oh, you fucking screwed over Brett. Yeah. How could you? It was that? like, but it was, I can't imagine it's any more than anyone else says to yeah, him, but yeah. he singled me out. Oh, he had a line that says, oh, it was like, I remember it because it made me sad. I had no choice yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was, I was kayfabe and he was shoot. Yeah, I was quite sad. Like, was, you know, we were just having a bit of fun here. Oh, yeah, especially we, because Jay is the Bret yeah, Hart guy. Yeah. You oh, know? Like, like, we sound like we really hurt his feelings. Yeah, I know. No, we he's, felt yeah, bad. He's not a good actor, so we yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it didn't ruin our night, but it didn't make it any better. It's true, yeah. true. So if you're out there, Earl, we love you, baby. Yeah. Yep. 
After taking zero offense, Booker hits a bookend and ties Andrew so tight, both legs hook the pin. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, the bookends so by Booker T. The bookends, this could be it. Oh, this is it. Oh, yeah. Shane Sewell tries to break up the celebration by Pearl Harboring Booker. Goes about as well as you'd expect, everyone except OSC. Uh, <laughs> he gets flattened after 25 seconds. He shouldn't have. They're pushing this guy as, we'll say, a mid carder. After the yeah, success yeah. of his feud with Martin Bashir, <laughs> he, they think he can push him to Booker T. No, yes. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting. He should have been in a tag team. No, I'm not suggesting he has any business pinning Booker T, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring. All I want is for him to look competitive. Yes. You're burying him already. It's What's the point? Match. And he pearl harbors him. He should have just yes. clotheslined them over the top and he's like... Exactly. And then the he can run away then from Booker if he wants. Yeah. But now he looks like a loser again. You know, not that he ever did before, but he does now. <laughs> <laughs> a hot chick? What section? Section three. You think you can get her to show her boobs? Over the headset, Lemon tells Angle about his Section 3 boobs. <laughs> Check out the boobs in Section 3, as in some girl with a huge rack is yeah. in the crowd. Better get the cameras on her. That is not true in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, there's no, cr- there's no crowd. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, oh, is this a, like a DX illusion where Sean and Triple H would always single out hot women in the crowd? and like, Whoa. I would think it was a bit of mix of shoot and work. You know, somewhere obviously plants this as a stripper and someone, yeah, just yeah, random women course, getting their tits out. It's also Florida, you know? You never know. It's pretty it's hot. Warm, There's probably yeah, no AC. Warm. Yeah, you know, yeah. it'll be good for them. Uh, <laughs> but he could be alluding to Eddie versus Angle, main event SmackDown, August 29, 2000, Steve. Some bird before the match flashed her tits and the audience got wind of it. So all the audience are going, like, oh, yeah, 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 get yeah, a chance yeah. to see tits. You know? yeah. and, <laughs> You'd be doing the oh same. Oh my God. And they went to ad break and then Jerry Lawler's like, hey, anyone in the crowd want to show us your puppies? And Angle is like, right, so nobody cares. What are we doing here, lads? Everyone is not interested in the match now. That's not the main <clears throat> poll. Eddie Guerrero versus Kurt Angle in 2000. Main event. Literally dream match yeah. going on. But in the real world, real fights and real tits, real tits. do in fact trump get hits. professional wrestling. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and get hits. Can I help you? Yeah, you gotta be kidding me, Kurt. You think I don't know what you're up to? Back in TNA, Stinger is suspicious of Kurt and his booking. See, it's Stinger versus Team 3D 211, and he warns him. I know what you're doing putting me in this handicap match because the upcoming match at Against All Odds is going to be Sting versus Kurt versus Bubba Ray versus Devon. Hmm. So Kurt wants that belt and so he's trying to weaken the world champion. Or he's suspicious of it anyway. Yeah. Possibly well found. <laughs> yeah. How, how could he not be suspicious? He's putting him in a handy. He's supposed to be his mate. And he's yeah. putting, of course, like, I mean. We said, look at us with the mafia. We're being fair. This is a fair, fair. And you're the world champion, aren't you? And, 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 who, and who says that Kurt can make the match? Like, Sting should have said, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, he's like, mm. I'm literally a member of the main event yeah. mafia. Like, technically, he's meant to be the leader of the main event mafia, but Kurt has kind of taken that role for him because. Mm. In both kayfabe and shoot, Sting is having second thoughts about this angle uh, and kind of okay. gutting it. Right. Um, it's a shame because it's a great angle. Even though this is the high point for the main event mafia, you know, this is where they took over. And in the past few weeks, they got rid of AJ because they wrecked his arm with a chair. They got rid of Joe because they wrecked his leg with a chair. Like Jared is gone. <laughs> Foley's gone, you know? Yeah. But they're kind of pulling the rug out from under the angle because Steve Borden doesn't want okay. to be a heel. Oh. Yeah. Well, they should have just said, you know, because everyone has to pull the weight in the company. It's like, oh, Jeff Jarrett doesn't have to. Well, splicey him. Do you remember when he was mopping the floors mm. and he had the, the hair net and he was washing dishes? Oh, stuff, so you know? fun. Yeah, yeah, cleaning the toilets. Yeah, it's great. And he did a great job. He did. Spark. There we go. <laughs> Leader. Leader. Jeff. I am 
the sensational Charmel, and I'm here with Matt Morgan. I mean, first, I get asked to be the biggest, the physically biggest American Gladiator in the history of the show. Matt Morgery promo. He immediately name drops two huge things that happened to him. American Gladiators and having his DNA digitally sequenced. <laughs> Did that actually happen? Oh, man. Here, I'll give you all the, all the rundown here. Before you go on, was he in the season of American Gladiators that Hogan was the host of? He was! Okay, okay. It's so weird, because they're already making the connections. Yeah, you know, Hulk is terrible. He's a brother, brother. You're doing great. You got the great python. Right? <laughs> you don't speak like a... He has never spoken like a human. Uh, Matt Morgan, do you remember his name in... Oh, I would love to... Can I try two guesses? Yes. One is python. I like it. It's not. Well, go on. And the other, tower. Ooh. Ooh I Can I have two guesses? Yes, of course. One... Colossus. Oh, that's great a great name. one. Great one, Steve. Two Titan. Oh, I that's love that. Also, one. man, you they're way be better than mine. This, yeah. They're way better than mine. And that's not it, no? Uh, uh, building. <laughs> 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 that could also be, you know, taken down by Bashir. He could crash yeah. into oh! it. Oh! I love it. I love yeah. it. He's the biggest, he's the baddest thing to ever hit the Gladiator Arena. Here is the beast! Holy <laughs> he's big! Yeah. Oh, Matt Morgan in Gladiators. Um, he has a elevator. Is that a reference to the Travelator? <laughs> No. No. Yeah, that they have to run off. Anyway, he was picked up for season three, put over huge, like he was kept in a big suspended cage that opened up and, you know, a spark pyro mm. or whatever, rah, rah, used when only necessary, you know, um, made his TV debut at the end of season two with the first semifinals, steamrolling both guys on the jousty, whatever, in under eight seconds. He was so powerful that the show was cancelled two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't handle him. There's a great video on YouTube of American Gladiators. They're like shooting a vignette here. Tell me about your character. And it's just, here's the whatever, four minutes of, mm. we're getting the 15 second snippets. Yep. And he was like, tell us about who, who, who are you? And I was like, well, I'm a pro wrestler. I'm not telling you that. That won't work in here. But yeah, I'm a pro wrestler. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh. He's great. He managed to get his genetically jacked, athletically stacked yeah, yeah, yeah. thing going. Oh, was, okay. He's good. He flubbed every blurb, though. He'd need to do it again. Okay. Tell people a little bit about, you know, who the Beast is. You know, the Beast. In real life, though? Because I'm a pro uh, wrestler. Just the Beast. Like, okay, the Beast. Well, what, what do you think? Because I'm a pro wrestler. I don't want to say that. That's not... Yeah, no, no, no. So what do you think happened? They had to go out and find the biggest, baddest man in all the world. And you were looking at him. The Beast. Then, I get asked to have my very DNA digitally sequenced and sent to the International Space Station, marking me really as the true modern-day genetic freak that I really am. Yes, and the other part two of that is Matt Morgan was also part of the so-called immortality drive, just some kind of like solid state drive, some kind of <laughs> device uh, with a lot of ROMs on it. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know, about, gone, gone forever. About, uh, was it, $270,000 worth yeah. of uh, PS2, yeah. PS3 ROMs? <laughs> And also uh, <laughs> uh, DNA sequencing of notable humans like Stephen Hawking, Lance Armstrong, Stephen Colbert, Playboy's Joe Garcia, to preserve human DNA in a time capsule should something cataclysmic happen to Earth. Um, yeah, it was taken to the International Space Station. Didn't they crash that down to Earth a couple of years ago? <laughs> 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 Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Did anyway, his DNA go into the fucking did. space It did. It went station. into space. And that was a huge honor for the space I mean, honor. that's a pretty impressive thing. It is. That you're such a specimen that yeah. your DNA is seen as special enough to shoot off into space. And Abyss, I know you're at home holed up in your cave like the big fat Neanderthal you are. Back on Earth <laughs> in DNA, <laughs> Morgan Dorfer is a heel now as he slags off Abyss and tells him to watch this. It's time for our third bout. It's the DNA of TNA. <laughs> Matt Morgan versus the Maple Leaf Muscle, P.D. Williams, with one hand tied behind his back. So Morgan comes out, one of the 1,100 fans in attendance tries to slap hands, 
And Morgan's just like, shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> <laughs> And the fan just flips him off. <laughs> it, oh, oh uh, what happened last week? They broke up. So, uh, Biss and Matt Morgan. They're not seeing each other anymore. They're, they're <laughs> not. They're, they're, they're on a break. They took they're on. seeing other people. <laughs> yes. They took on beer money in a first blood match. Um, <clears throat> basically, lots of chair shots. No. Belt shot to Morgan. No, he kicks out. And then Morgan runs in with a chair to save his tag team partner from getting a beat down and swerve turns around smacks abyss and then beats the shit out of him splits him open and bit of finger wagging and shouting yeah uh, what was his reasoning abyss has been losing tag team matches they they had a tag team match at genesis and they lost and abyss he felt that abyss dropped the ball okay okay Wait, wait, wait. So they just lost again. I, he attacked his own partner. Yeah. That's another a big L. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just, just the wrong column. Yeah, but then he feels better. Okay. I generally don't like those heel turns. You know, the ones where I'm going to hit this guy and then I turn around and I hit that guy. It's so russo riff Like isn't 15 it? minutes into the match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And, and it's always telegraphed as well. You're like, why are you waiting? What, where's the delay? It's always a delay. Why is your foot turned to the side exactly. like you're going to pivot exactly. on it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Kind of heel turn. <laughs> hey! Hey! Boom. Boom. I want to say something to Barack Obama right now. Stop building the wall to keep the Mexicans out. Build the wall to keep those <laughs> from Canada from getting in. Steiner tells Obama to build a wall to keep Canadians out. <laughs> A uh, little baby outlast, still wearing Steiner's child-sized chainmail. Yeah. Oh, wow. Morgan and Petey, the size differential is insane. So Morgan gets on his knees. That was great. Com- Very heelish. Yes. Commentators quip Petey should do a three-foot drop kick. <laughs> oh, he's good. What can Petey do? He WCW's Morgan. Flipped out. His offense doesn't last. Morgan with his trademark cornerback elbows. Yeah, yeah. You like that? Yeah. Sidewalk slam. One, two. No, not yet, mate. Big fall away slam. Splat. Not so much the bump, but I'm more worried about Petey breaking his hand as he's constantly landing on his hand, you know? Scotty's hollering instructions to Matt, so the ref, not so sneakily, releases Petey. Now it potentially resembles a fair fight. Snow calls Petey's big comeback. Big flying burrito. <laughs> <laughs> from the fella from Canada. <laughs> knee buster. Dijon knee mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exceptional. Knock over Scott Steiner too, which counts as a distraction. Turn around just in time for Morgan pump kick and pin in four minutes, eight seconds. That one looked at me. Oh, that one got him with that double pump back. You can say what you want to Matt Morgan's big, but he's also kind of bad. I would not want to take that boot. What'd you think of this one? Did what it was supposed to do. I really appreciated that Petey didn't win this match. I thought oh that's, my God, he that's the way they were yeah. going to go. Like That would kill Morgan. I know, but I still thought that's the way they the, were going to oh, go. The one-handed yeah. little fella yeah. beating the seven-footer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And just happy that we got to see a elevator. Is that the first elevator we've seen in this arc? Oh, well, yes. And yeah. it was so soft. Like, he kind of paused for a second, yeah. then put him down. He must really like Petey. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful move. And then Scott Steiner puts him in the old Steiner recliner. And he's like, ah, a bit of mustard on yeah. <laughs> Dijon mustard. <Yeah. laughs> Dijon mustard. Wait, wait a minute. He's setting himself up on it. Oh! oh get my money ready. ready. What do you call that right there? That's that knee buster. Knee jaw buster. I thought this match was decent. You know, in terms of the moves they did, whatever. But in terms of putting over Morgan as a threat, I think it did really well. And then it also made you feel bad for Petey because not only is he half the size of Morgan, uh, he also had Steiner out there causing shit and he had one arm tied behind his back. So yeah, I thought it was really good. I thought Nash was super mean in this match on commentary. He buried Morgan multiple times. Uh, Kevin's on, if there's one thing you can say about Morgan, he's big. Mm. He's certainly big. Mm. I also wonder if he regrets getting that tattoo. <laughs> Dude, like, I understand that you're the main event mafia and having the crack, but he's a heel, you're a heel. You're meant to be on, like, some kind of, not parody, but, you know, like, definitely on the same side. And they're going to push Morgan. Don't try to cut the legs out of him, Ash. Come on, mate. 
He does say one nice thing after the match. He says he's big and he's not that bad. I wouldn't want to take that boot. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. something. Just on his tattoo, do you remember we were saying, man, why don't you... F- it's a beautiful tattoo, but, you know, finish the tattoo, please. Yeah. Why didn't you colour it in? Yeah. One of our great fans who is on screen now says that's because it's a blueprint. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, that's really clever. Why Why didn't one of us get that? Like, Not that clever. Not yeah, bad. Yeah, we, maybe that guy should be on the podcast. I'm a bit sad yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's out? <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> you the new host. Yeah, that would be so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, look. Silent treatment. He wants, okay, let's, anyway. Uh, I'll finish, I'll finish. Yeah, okay. So anyway, up next, we had um, Cody Schneider and Bandy Murphy talking about the toughest cowboy TV show. All right. Oh God, this? Yeah, this is good. We, but we are skipping the best part of the entire show. No, no, I this this is the abridged. I do the abridged podcast. Ah. Um, and then at the end of the show, it faded to black. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've already got your Patreon movies. <laughs> See, we have nothing on you. You can just leave. That's the problem. Do you want to go? Do you want to take yeah. over again? No, I'd love you to take over. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, what happens at the end of this match? Oh, and there's a big brawl. Steiner puts Petey in the recliner, and then the front line geeks run out for the save. <laughs> then Booker T, sorry, <gasps> then Black Snow becomes Booker T. He gets into the ring and he brings his microphone for what is, in my opinion, quite possibly the most entertaining two minutes of professional wrestling I've ever seen. Hmm? Booker T gets in there and he puts the boots to everyone and commentates his own beatdown. Booker T just hit him with a shot to the job. Boom! <laughs> Booker T just got creed with the big front kick. Boom! <laughs> Booker T gonna go down the end again and again Boom! <laughs> Booker T's beating up Aaron Bat in ring. Boom! Booker T just thought it would have been shot and shot. Boom! Booker T would have been done the big shot and shot. Boom! Big boom. Oh. Booker T just pulled Creed up. Booker T's pulling Creed up right now. He's gonna hit him with that big front kick. Oh! Pete is down. He's dogging him. He's got a big kick set up. Boy, he's gonna catch him, man. He's gonna get him. incredible wildly entertaining booker t for this show was the greatest professional wrestler that's ever lived yeah listen you can't have a baby face do this that is a complete heel thing to do to commentate while you beat someone down and booker t is the guy to do it so sorry creed sorry lethal (laughs) this is how it is it was amazing it's very rare when wrestling is as funny as you know like a comedy show or a comedy movie but i was like actually funny yeah. i was yeah. barely laughing watching this i watched it over and over again it was so amazing yep. he comes in with a kick oh, oh. oh. He with that ball. oh he's gonna pick up greed he's gonna pick up creed he picks up greed he's gonna pick up kick boom <laughs> That's fucking amazing mate Ah, uh, yes, this is Black Snow here with my co-host, Jess Lemon. What do you think about the show tonight? Well, earlier we saw ODB uh, get pretty much annihilated by Awesome Kong. They also, Booker T went out there and just smashed Rudy and Andrew like there wasn't no joke. What do you think, man? And Matt Morgan showed TNA fans why he is the blueprint. Hour two, Chet Lemon and Black Snow recap the matches tonight. Oh, it's amazing, hilarious hearing Snow put over Booker T. <laughs> <Seven people. laughs> the cave have. IWGP tag champions Team 3D are out for an interview. When they walk past the commentary booth, Booker's like, you don't have beef with me. I- I'm Black Snow. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So uh, Team 3D have the, what, the IWGP tag titles? Yeah. Wristwatch. The wristwatches. <laughs> Oh, if you're wondering, Team 3D won those belts, uh, won the baby belts at Wrestle Kingdom 3 in the Tokyo Dome from MVP Most Violent Players, Togi Makabe and Toriano. This was a rematch from the same hardcore bout from last year. There's a distraction, 3D through a table, and they won them. We watched that show. That was eventually shown by TNA as Global Impact. And I believe that's a show where Angle wrestled Tanahashi. 
Splicey? Yeah. No Splicey. I want to keep the channel alive. Uh, I yeah. said, like, I don't know what the... Like, is that a new Japan footage or is that... No, it's the TNA footage, footage, but they'll fuck the channel anyway. They've already copyright struck it. I did try just to see, and it's like, no, copyright strike. Fuck. No. Back on American Shores, Bully Ray cuts an odd whiny baby face promo. Sting, we won't cry over beating you up tonight as you didn't stop our ass whooping seven or eight weeks ago. Seven or eight weeks ago, you did nothing. Seven or eight weeks ago, you didn't help. Just pick one. No one knows if it's seven or eight weeks ago. <laughs> Can't really hear anything over his haircut. He's got a mohawk, hmm. but it would be much more intimidating if he didn't have a big Alan Shearer tuft <laughs> yeah. at the front. A little uh, lech cough. <laughs> <laughs> Dip in with the main event mafia before we start. Charmel joins the commentary booth and Booker just gets completely distracted, horning on his beautiful wife. Levin's like, uh, I'm surprised you're going the technical approach. <laughs> <laughs> the match can't start, not before Scott Steiner introduces them, uh, oh, introduces Team 3D. God. Hailing from Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the great state of obesity. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah. Team 3D. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Very good. I, I love Bully Ray. He's like, <laughs> you know, because he's like, I'm sure he's heard this for the last decade. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just being around Scott Steiner, just amazing. They would have been on Raw together, I think, as well. Yeah. 2003? Yeah, that kind of okay. area. Okay. Yeah. Helen from Dunkin' Donuts! From the great state of obesity! Team 3D! Snow at 11, just get in on it too. Calling Bull Ray, the guy with the 42-inch waistline. <laughs> <laughs> and Nash just, you know, the floodgates are open, so it just calls him a fat guy with a bad haircut. Burial. Yeah, yeah. Absolute burial. Do nothing wrist lock. Uh, and Sting is there too. Do nothing wrist lock, so Black Snow name drops. The Blade Runners. And Nash says, J- yeah, Jim Helwig. Yeah, Rock and Sting. It's like, oh, man, a period accurate before he changes his name too. Dip to the outside and Bubba Pearl harbors Steiner from the front. Really should have seen that coming. Sting's looking really windy tonight. Maybe he's just selling, trying to having to fight, you know, the Dudbees in an unfair bout. I don't know, man. He's looked really, really bad lately. The world title match at Genesis, he wrestled Rhino and that match was bad. Ooh, I have to hear about that one. And he can't as he just doesn't have enough speed. Doesn't have enough and there's a Scorpion death drop as Sting hits it. Sting's got it. Sting retains. Sting, the OOC special. What's happened? He's just taken with wearing mm. a shirt. We're now in t-shirt Sting phase. Yeah, but he'll come out of the... He doesn't stay in a t-shirt for the rest of his career. Yeah. We got a full whack here. Yeah. So I'll give you the move list here. Standing headlock. Headlock on the mat. Back to standing headlock. Wrist lock. Tag and bubba. Headlock. Shoulder charge. Punch. Slam, elbow, ad break. Questionarium. <laughs> Every move has like a stand and survey the ring, hands on hips, you know? Hey, dub spot, double clothesline and rest. Gets caught with a rock bottom. Oh, it was eventually. Badly mistimed one. Mm. In the middle of that ring right now. Wait a minute. Wait, what the hell? He, my oh. five look in. he just did a my five look in and she was disqualified for that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Kurt Angle, he hits a wow, wow. <laughs> uh, will that give Sting the win? One, two, no, which seems to legit surprise Black Snow. Sting's up on Devon's shoulders. And then we get the most awkward, I don't want to take the doodly device. I will, but it'll just be the worst one ever made. Yeah. And uh, Kurt bails in to save Sting from getting pinned. So a DQ in ten and a half minutes. Made of it mafia's all over. Made of it mafia's all over these guys right now. Oh, now we got some action going. But I will say, as a wrestler, if someone is going to hit a doomsday device on me, I want the person whose shoulders I'm on bump with me, please. It's so much safer than, you know, hawk mm. or animal just going <laughs> and then <laughs> not caring. <laughs> what what would you do in that situation? You'd try and land on your feet, maybe. Like, when you're going down, do you just put out your hands and say, you know, fuck it? I suppose, yeah. Put out your hands and your legs and hope. And just hope. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. 
it's Terrifying. a scary yeah. move. It's yeah. a scary yeah, move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not much of a pop from it as well. So it's just a danger move. It's like the buckle bomb that Seth Rollins yeah. does, injuring people, dislocating their shoulders, you know? Don't do it. This match, strongest evidence for the Owlads needing to be knocked off their perch. I thought it was just abysmal. Uh, do that. Uh-oh. Bang, bang! Who's that? It is Mick Foley, or the lead guy from System of a Down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Serge Tonkian, yeah. Spicy, it's, not, it's not, not a bad likeness. Mixers with LAX and Abyss to ward off the heels. But, oh man, stop. LAX Hernandez. Mm. What, what's happening here? What's he, what's he got? The old Tasha Rooney. Yeah, it's just like a, like the bad Bart <laughs> mustache. <laughs> Hernandez not also has this glorious Tash, but he's also gotten a gimmick where during a match, when he like takes the wrestler down, he'll go to the outside and he'll take a mustache comb and start to groom his new glorious stash in front that's, of the camera. That, that's incredible. It Terrible is great. Gimmick. I love that. No, I love it. It doesn't work for him. gimmick. Because, you know, he's a streetwise gangster. But, yeah. You know. Like, he doesn't need that. He's super mix, like. Yeah. yeah. Mick makes two new matches for tonight, and the realization sets in, oh, the baby faces have regained control of the show. Main event Mafia Impact is over. Dead. It's It's gone. Like, there's not, not even a remnant left. It's just like, oh, this is now a normal episode they of Impact. They didn't even fight for it. I'm like, lads, I've literally watched you guys o- over the last seven weeks systematically take out every baby face the frontline has. Just do it again! <laughs> like, yeah. it's very... St- Creed, no! no Creed. <laughs> Creed. Unconscious Creed! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's kind of a sad state that TNA have done the front line so dirty that when they make their valiant comeback, I'm sad. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember back in the day, I was so sad that it wasn't the full episode of Main Event Mafia. Actually, when I was re-watching this, I was like, yeah, I think Booker and Kevin Nash, I think they were like losing a bit of interest in it. So I think if you cut it here, it's just you only have gold, do you know? When Booker goes in to beat up people, it's like Chet Lemon and Charmel left on commentary and they're just silent. Yeah. It's like Neo and Mossy if they commentated for us. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they, they they say nothing. It's like, mate, they're destroying the baby faces. Talk about that. Or talk about how Sting was wrong to doubt Kurt Angle because he came out and helped him. and You know, loads of things. And, but mm-hmm. I do want them to come back. They should have the first hour of impact. First hour next week, next week, next week. Ah, uh, no, no, it's special. Leave it, leave it as What's it fun? is. Leave the memories alone, I only had one, what, hour, hour and a quarter of this. It's not enough. I, d- I think it is. <sighs> yeah. Steve. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> boo. I may be like a reunion once a year kind of thing, but. I think I'm with you in the sense that the more they do it, the less special it, it would be, and it will take from this. But I still want it because it's better than the baby faces. Mm. Bad booking, lads. Mm. Bad booking. Well, you know, none of you are that good, though. So, oh, like AJ and Joe are great. Uh, Joe, hey, like on promo. You know, he's Pro- coming back. Joe? He's coming back. Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, yeah, hold yeah, on, yeah, well, hold yeah, on a yeah, sec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, backstage, who huddle with Jim Cornette? He gleefully proclaims, "We're back in control." We're back in control of the Impact Zone. I want everybody to do your jobs as well as you always do. I'm just looking at Dave Penzer. Like, as soon as they started talking, he's like, <laughs> he's trying not to laugh so hard. This guy, yeah. my goodness. Two things I've got for you. One is that four baby faces was enough to run off the entire main event mafia. <laughs> One of them's a shareholder, yeah. you know, yeah. a hobbling shareholder. And they didn't even need Joe and AJ. <laughs> to do. And the other thing is, like, I'm not a fan of seeing Don West and Tanay standing. I don't like it. It's new to me. And it's it, it, it it is a bit weird. weird. Yeah, yeah. Like there, there are like um, what was the little, the little lads that were like the ball end and they wobbled, and they didn't have legs. <laughs> is this a Christmas ornament? No, it was just like a toy, and you put them in yeah. weebles. Ah, so They're you like, weebles. like you think Don West and Mike Tanay have like a half football? Yes. For they don't have legs; they just have. And like, they yeah, just it's not, it's not weeble yeah, around yeah, the yeah. place. The artist know? stopped drawing them at, at, at the waist. Yeah. <laughs> and seeing their legs, uh, it's just, yeah. you know. It's like Ridley uh, in Metroid, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, you're not weebles anymore. 
I don't, I don't like them standing on their hind legs. <laughs> it's a little roaring halloon. Yes. Hey, hey, look at me and Weeble. The Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Romper Room makes Weeble toys. I gotta say, it's good to be back home. Mike Tanay, Don West back at ringside. Big announcement coming from TNA Management's Jim Cornette. So, back at their natural position, Don West and Mike Tanay are sitting, whoo, at the commentary booth as they hawk next month's pay-per-view against all odds. And a reinstated Dave Penzer calls our next matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest on TNA Impact is a hardcore match as booked by Mick Foley. As booked by Mick Foley. TNA, don't give a fuck. Just blasting cave wave anyway. Hey, I suppose it's fine, but calling it book, booking the match. Anyway, weird. Because it's the next matchup. Uh, peace. Steve, would you mind, like, for authenticity, can you, like, look that way when you go? (laughs) 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 Abyss's entrance. He hot dogs outside for so long, his theme loops. Steiner doesn't even need to dip out and in again. He just WCWs him immediately. (laughs) God. Uh, Abyss takes it to Scotty. Clothesline, clothesline, and follows up with a hoe train. Do you see how he runs? He's like... (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> a comedy stagger yeah. it's amazing big papa bails to the outside and goes shopping for toys what have we got here oh, a crutch nah, nah, nah. Just, I, I can't choose he just grabs three sticks and he's like oh, I got all the way just gets kicked rookie Abyss can use any of the weapons he chooses Scott Steiner cannot use any of them Commentators tell us, eh, excuse me, Steiner, oh, it's only a hardcore match for Abyss. You still have regular rules apply. Like, if Scotty uses one, he'll get DQ'd. Scotty props up against the shitty plywood wall, and Abby runs through it. Two, a uh, two out of ten reaction? Yeah, I mean, like, we just saw it, like, a couple of weeks ago, and it was done yeah, so much point. better. Yeah, it was, like, it was in the angle match, and that was an incredible spot. Yeah, and everyone went insane. Yeah. This one was like, hmm. Diminishing returns. You gotta book your spots properly, and you gotta space them out. Mm. Steiner wields a folding chair, but the monster <clears throat> punches it, disarming him. I love that spot. Two whopper calls by D-Dub. Whammo with a garbage can, crush a mundo. <laughs> <laughs> and it blades Steiner Hardway. I knew he was hard headed, but come on. Whack a ball shot. Steiner goes for a ring bell, which harkens to fellow Made of a Mafia member Kurt Angle, his match with Jared at Genesis, where he grabs the ring bell and juts him with like the crown in the crown of the head with the wood. It was nasty. Scotty wields the ring bell. Abyss is like, oh, I'm not punching that. No, fuck that. <laughs> Choke slam on the garbage can. One, two, Steiner kick out. Scotty uses the steel pipe and he just goes, and it actually rings the bell. And smash you with it. And that's what, oh, there's a steel pipe. <laughs> I know, that was great. But that's good because it's a DQ for Big Papa Pump using a weapon. Um, hilariously, Tanae tells us, well, the timekeeper can't actually ring the bell. That either. was funny. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Referee Stick well, Johnson asking for the bell, but of course you can't ring the bell. The timekeeper doesn't have it. Not bad, actually. I mean, this is Steiner's level. Keep it simple. Few weapons in there, bit of brawly, and not too long. So it served its purpose. Not the worst thing I've ever seen. Bit of walkie. Yeah. Bit of brawly. Yeah. Abyss is really good. He's a fantastic pro wrestler when he doesn't rely on tax and glass. When he's just let go, he's like, man, this guy's really good. The booking of the match was stupid. Having a hardcore match for one person and not a hardcore match for the other is it's just a bit silly. Like it probably would have been more entertaining if they could both smack each other with shit, you mm. know? But it was fine, you know? TV match. Hmm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post-match, the lights go out. He's coming, he's, he's coming, coming, he's coming, uh, he's coming to land. Uh, on your man. Dickie Freeman. Winning hands. Southern fried. <laughs> <laughs> Zip lines in like a fanny. I love it. What's his offense? Kick. Boot. Scotty's in the corner. Jumping nothing. 
nothing. <laughs> I actually like that <laughs> jumping elbow. He does the jumping in, and then there was nothing. And then it's like elbow, okay. And then the coup de grace, the coup de grace, head into Brett's turnbuckle. That'll show him. Yeah. 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 I love how his music keeps playing throughout the entire segment. It's got that kind of game show searchy vibe, like they're going to like vote someone off and... I know it's on the weakest link. Or, or, or you know? what's the, the price is right when they're picking somebody from the audience? All you need is the. <laughs> <laughs> Steiner didn't know what to do with suicide. Suicide back, and again the lights go out here in the impact zone. Boy, just in the nick of time to save the monster abyss from that brutal beating when the lights come back on. Just like that, he's gone. Lights out and he disappears. So it was like immediately, I'll like slow it to 0.25 because, okay, so they crop to Abyss, but like the next shot where, you know, you can see the crowd, where are they looking? And yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, to the left. It's like, so that's uh, where he was going off to. Is he walking he's or going, running? He's going, he's going, he's going, he's going, <laughs> he's going away. <laughs> How quick, because obviously if you run off, you can't. You got to hide under the ring. I think you, right. you're the ramp is too. So long, yeah. you know? <laughs> everything goes dark, and you just hear, <laughs> and it's him jumping through the wall <laughs> like a <the> best is. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if the you know the lights turn off and he was to run away and he just yeah. trips over on it? <laughs> it's over. Oh, so <laughs> funny. They wake up and he's like, ah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Or if you want to go full Simpsons, you know, you can have, you know, the lights go out, <laughs> run away, door, <laughs> window, <laughs> power door, <laughs> engine, <laughs> and Magnus, and my time for glory is upon us. Magnus, I'm athletic promo package. He's debuting next week. You know, he's doing a jog or whatever. It looks like he's about to uh, you know, negotiate hard saying, you know, 200k. 200k or we take it to start. <laughs> <laughs> Similar uh, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah very good. I think very that's, good. What, that's what he was <laughs> 300k, 300k, I will take it to Sky. <laughs> Ooh, next up, toughest cowboy. In the back, Lauren's not got her cowboy boots on, but her working boots. <laughs> it's Cody Schneider and Bandy Murphy. And it's like, I had to look at... Bandy? Him. Yeah, yeah, Bo Bandy. <laughs> <laughs> Bandy Murphy. <laughs> his, his legs aren't great. <laughs> <laughs> They're here to hawk the toughest cowboy, a new show on Spike TV. Some blood running, you're going to see some broken bones, you're going to see some teeth get knocked out. And, uh, you know, the guy that's standing at the end of this is the true toughest cowboy. He's going to win a ranch. Oh, see, how do you feel about the mega chaps? The mega chaps? Yeah, yeah, full on, like, he's got a tarp over his legs, basically. Can I shock you? Go on. I'm absolutely fine with it, I'll tell you why. Because he's not a fucking wrestler. Ah. That's, he should wear chaps. I don't know why they wear chaps. Is it because of the chafing? Just, it keeps his... Jeans. Thighs. His yeah. thighs, maybe. Like, you know. It's it, a protect, it's protective. It protective. saves his jeans. <laughs> his special jeans, it, you it's, know? It's, it's like, um, like a butcher with the butcher's vest or whatever. Is it? Is it that? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was more for reduce the friction. But anyway, cowboys need to wear them for a function. Wrestlers. Why would a wrestler need to wear chaps? America. <laughs> and the cowboys. Bang, bang. <laughs> Like, if I was a cowboy, I'd probably wear chaps too. But well, would it not be more streamlined to just wear a single pair of pants that appear like chaps? Oh, are you saying like a shiny... Like Sean. Like, no! <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, way more docile, for sure. Hey, let's go, check it out! <laughs> oh, Beer money, fans! Beer money! Thank God 
beer money show up laughing, joking, souse, you know? Oh my God. Uh, our cowboys raz these cowboys. Cowboy is like, oh, what, what? So you can ride this cow for eight seconds? I rode your ma for eight seconds. <laughs> Pretty Hilarious. good. Pretty good. I can't believe you actually said it. I thought they were going to cut him off beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> we just said I rode your man. <laughs> that <was> Very <laughs> funny. I, I absolutely saved this segment. I must be the world's greatest cowboy because I rode your man. Oh, I you twice as 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 well, leave it to James Storm to upset our guest from the world's toughest cowboy. It's actually funny. Uh, because with five matches down, one match left, it's time for your main event. <laughs> Dave Penzer, a handicap match that Mick Foley booked. It's Kurt Angle versus both members of LAX, Homicide and Hernandez. The Latin American Exchange! LAX with some awful babyface rap version of their theme. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. We keep it hardcore. We're in 187. We keep it hardcore in council elections. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Angle perturbed as he's in for an unfair fight two on one. As Tanae notes, turnabout is fair play. He's been great all night. He uh, Tanae's amazing anyway. And he knows the product inside out and does a great job at like funneling Russo's booking <laughs> into something you can digest. Homicide is in first. Oh, that's fine. I, I can take you. Hilariously, Homicide tries to out-wrestle the two-time Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. But it's Carney Pro Wrestling, so he actually kind of wins the exchange. He hits a tilt-a-whirl and gets up and does, like, a wanking yeah. sign? <laughs> <laughs> Just jizz the crowd. <laughs> what what a baby the fuck? face. LAX with Motor City Machine Gun style offense, double team clothesline to the chest and to the tummy. Whip him into Hernandez, who just belly pumps him. Bit of big daddy there. Follow up with a drop kick to a sitting Kurt. Black Bart, big clothesline. Kurt regroups on the outside. Bad move. He's hit with a plancha. An over the top rope splash to the outside. It's so impressive. He's a huge dude. Can Kurt Angle prepare? You can't prepare for that as he comes over. And into an ad break. Ooh, that gives us just enough time to recap the different types of dives you'd usually see. So, over the top rope splash like Hernandez? Plancha. Oh yeah. Over the top rope flip like Owens? Tope con Hilo. Yes, like a somersault plancha. Hilo means thread. It should be Tope con Giro, which means to turn, but it just got adopted in it. Back first, over the top rope, like... Fosbury flop. Yes, like uh, Matt Riddle does here. A.K.A. a moonsault plancha. Through the ropes like Daniel Bryan? Suicide dive or tope suicida. Perfect. Okay, yeah, that's like the main ones there. But just one more. Twist over the top rope like Cesaro? Corkscrew plancha. Uh-huh. Excellent. So, Herna- just to bring it back, Hernandez over the top rope splash is... Plancha. Woohoo! Oh, watch out, watch out now. Just ran up the Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, fuck! Oh, oh, my God. By Matt Riddle! You know what he's thinking? It's Kevin Abraham taking out Triple H! I said that you, if you accept the open challenge. Oh, no. What the world was that? We're told during the ad break, an eye rake gets Angle back in control. A surefire weapon in the arsenal. Straps down. Angle lock. Kick. Angle slam. No! Big time DDT! Oh, nice way to turn it into DDT! Last time, Homicide was too fresh, turned and booked out of an ankle lock. This time round, roll forward into Black Bart's flying shoulder block. Catches Angle's crossbody. Black Bart! Hoosh up into a sitting powerbomb. Very nice. Where's he gonna put him? Where's he gonna send him? Anywhere he wants. Oh, powerbomb! Sit out style! 
Okay, you took a sitting power bomb. Kurt, are you taking a border toss? No. No. <laughs> Don West explains Angle's foot touched off the ropes. Solid kayfabe. Are you taking a gringo killer? Fuck no. <laughs> I feel like Kurt would, but I'm not. But Angle escapes. Homicide selling the ankle from the ankle lock damage. Clever. And that's the opening Kurt needs to Angle slam and pin. In nine and a half minutes, he wins it. Hernandez nowhere to help. And that does it. Solid TV match. It's got Kurt Angle. It's got Hernandez. You know, it's you got a mustache. It's got a mustache. You can't really go wrong. Yeah, pretty good. But like, you know, I wasn't jumping out of my seat. I liked it. Homicide's really good. Obviously, you know, it's kind of tough to make him look like a threat to Kurt Angle because, you know, he's booked as a tag team guy and he's like half his size. But Hernandez, because he won the Feaster Fired, he won a world title shot against Sting. So they're really trying to make him look good. And yeah, job done with this. Yeah. They did a really good job. Like Kurt Angle is your top heel in the entire company. Nandez looked like a star. Can you imagine Triple H? during you know, his reign of terror, making any mid-carder look like that. Kozlov. <laughs> <laughs> double, double E! Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Did a great job here. But it is just a TV match. Nine and a half minutes. Kurt Angle's great. Uh, yeah, Main Event Mafia might have been shufty off calling the shots tonight, but they close the show a winner. And not only does Angle survive, he thrives and ends up gaining the victory. And that closes the show. That's the, that's the end of the show, lads. Yeah. Nothing else happened <sighs> at all. That's it. Well, well, that's pretty good. Have yeah. a good weekend. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Good luck to you, sir. You know, whatever's next up, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you'll do a great job picking it. So, yeah. Good night to you all. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not quite. We end with the greatest teaser of all time. Steve, what, what, what happens here? Um, oh, on my... On, on oh, no, 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 no. Just... just how does impact close? Yeah, yeah. Fades to black. We discussed this already. And what, then what happens? I obviously Did wasn't. you skip? I was obviously not paying attention. <laughs> oh my fucking God. I, I cannot believe. Can't believe you missed That you missed this. It's the biggest thing. That uh, okay, th- or we're getting Steve's live, live reac- reaction. I don't have to see it. Show to Ook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Let me introduce you to the real Samoa Joe. (laughs) Samoa Joe. It's such a cock. Sorry, yes, yes, yes. So yes, you did yes. see it? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. How is this not, like, burned into your brain? It just went out of my head. Um, yeah, what's to be said? We, we we get introduced to the real Samoa Joe. He's fatter than ever. <laughs> with a big fat cock on his face. <laughs> <laughs> He's fatter than ever. <laughs> Oh my god! I love <laughs> how he's like. Let me introduce you to the real Joe, as he shows us the worst version of him <laughs> there's ever been. Oh, I, disaster! You know the way we're giving out Sting. You should turn your heel. Please do what we say. Do the thing because we're paying you to do it. And it's like, well, Samoa Joe, you, you shouldn't have done this. <laughs> I take it back. You should have a bit of fight in you. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have allowed them to deface you. Well, hold on. I bet it was his idea. I bet it was his design. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whose cock is it based on? <laughs> <laughs> is it a mix of many cocks throughout his time? <laughs> do you know? Is it an amalgamation of all the most important cocks in his life? Like, do, you, do you think? <laughs> the most important cocks in his life. Do you think he drew around one? You know. <laughs> <laughs> that would suggest that someone had to lay it yeah. on it, yeah. like sideways, because it includes the ball as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd be so funny if he had balls in his chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
Oh. oh, has Joe ever done any <laughs> shoot interviews where he talks about the the big cock on his face? Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, that that explains it thoroughly. Yeah. <laughs> I am now convinced. Fucking hell, magic Ooh. cannot like it's the company that keeps on giving. Either the wrestling is spectacular and you love everything that you see and you want them to do well, or it's so bad that you can't turn away. Nothing in TNA is ever boring. It's never not worth watching. Yep. Yes, yes. They do not shoot down the middle at all. Committee of guys who you talked to and they went, you know, behind closed doors, had their meeting, and then the booking was out. You know, there was very little uh collaboration you know as far as like what you want to do or what you want to say i mean they'd had their ideas and they put them out there and uh you know a lot of times we you know I, I, we always joke about the speech we get like you know you know hey we, we've done this and we know what to do and you know so we say all right cool and really that's all we really could do at the time i'll tell you what happened scott tonight <laughs> scott was introduced to my nation of violence what a cliffhanger I can't wait (laughs) to record again. We have Nation of Violence coming up. We have Joe coming in the van. We have him kidnapping Steiner. Spoiler. Yeah, like just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Kidnapping Steiner. Yeah. There's a bag. The bag. He wears a bag. The van. The sword. The the sword with with the little candy cock on the top. (laughs) People will not know what. We're we're talking in code, basically. And then there's the tracksuit with the mask. Remember that? Steiner was like, you know the way like with Kane, WWE was like, he wears the mask, he's disfigured and burned, you can't see him, it's so fucking gross. <laughs> Steiner was basically doing that, he was like, he attacked me, he cut me, I'm cut to shreds, I can't show my face, I'm grand, <laughs> I also have a cock on my face now. <laughs> fucking did, did he fall asleep uh, <laughs> early at the party, was it? Yeah. All right, a couple of quotes in the aftermath. What do you think about that? Sean, Sean, Joe, Sean, Joe, Bolt. You got three <laughs> in the TV, not the champion. <laughs> awesome. Come on, the group known as Confucius. I believe that's Contourage. Here comes Rocka Good. What do you think about Rocka Good? She's a giraffe. She's a big one. I bet she's the big girl. Because the two referees have no chances because they're a bunch of candy asses. Kevin, how's my announcing? I, you know, I, I said earlier in the, in the telecast, I said Penzer's out of a job. I think so, too. He's a little weasel. You've definitely got legs in this business. Uh, I'll tell you story walking, bitch. I'll take a couple of shots. And main event mafia might could use somebody in the, in the group like this. This guy, this Petey Williams. I mean, they need a lot of, like, they need a lot of dishwashing. They need car driving. They need, they need workout tips. They need One work. thing about Morgan is, he's a big guy. One thing about Morgan, though, he's a big guy. Like oh, he hit it with that big fly burrito. He hit it with that big fly burrito Look right there. Pete. Oh, I got that big fly burrito. He caught it with it right there. That had a little sauce on it. Booker, he just caught it with a big shot and shot. Boom. Booker, he with a big shot and shot. Boom. I mean, they guess what they want to say that. I mean, I'm Black Snow. This is Jet Lemon. I'm Black Snow. Uh, how you guys doing tonight? Y'all what are you saying? Nobody wants to be a bad guy with a bad haircut? I think he wants to be mafia, but he probably doesn't have a suit that fits him. Y'all want to say you're looking mighty, mighty beautiful here today. Thank you, yes, baby. You're, you're looking I'm, I'm good. I'm surprised you're going to a technical approach. I'm about to butt you down like a biscuit. But these guys are still trying to call themselves the, the 20-some time te- the tag team champions when really it's probably about me, eight. got beat 20 times. It's probably only about eight really legitimate titles, those ECW independent. <laughs> Welcome to the Aftermath. Oh, see, sir, what did you think of Main Event Mafia Impact? It was one of the best episodes of Impact ever. Well, certainly the first half. I mean, the second half was a regular episode of Impact, but the first half was special. That I, you know, vividly remember at the time, not expecting this at all. Okay, they might have mentioned, yeah, we're going to take over Impact. And it's like, yeah, of course you're. Oh, no, you actually did, and it's hilarious. Booker T, you fucking workhorse. Unbelievable. You basically ran the show for the first half. You did everything. 
Steiner was hilarious. Nashi had some really good moments as well. So it was just great fun. If you're going to ever watch one single episode of Impact, this is the one. Mm. Yep. An amazing. I'd say like the first hour and 20 was just incredible. Booker T, as you said, stole the show. A one man workhorse. The most entertaining man that pro wrestling has ever had. I fully predict that he's either going to win the MVP of the arc based off of this and possibly OSW Hall of Fame, but he may be too good for that. Mm. Legendary performance. Rest of the show was great fun. Steiner was awesome. (laughs) Just, it was a bit sad that when the baby faces came back, it's meant to be the yeah moment, but it it, it was actually the the opposite. Yeah, you're like, aww, I was enjoying that. Look at all these killjoys coming out. But then that Joe ending was just the little cherry on top of this amazing Sunday. Brilliant episode. Everybody should check out this. This is wrestling at its funnest. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, you said it all, guys. Um, Historic, instantly memorable show straight into the long-term memory banks. <laughs> Flip my shit watching this at the time. I remember being annoyed with online reports because every all, all the like uh, wrestling reporters hated it. Said, oh, you bury the faces and the heels are better baby faces and a terrible idea and it's not funny and blah, 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 blah. And I was like... None of that's wrong, but also shut up. Yeah, yeah, it's like you don't enjoy wrestling anymore, so shut your face. Like, this was fucking hilarious. And also... The heels are more talented than the baby faces. That's their fault. Fight back, lads. That's your job, you know? And the baby faces can't take over the show. This is a fantastic idea, concept for a single show, but the heels need to do it. And I'm so glad they did. Huge win. Iconic show. Hopefully more people are aware of it now because of it. And go, please, go and watch it. It's on Impact Plus in sparkling 1080p. Amazing. Two things left. Main negative of it. Bring out the respect, Domitor. <laughs> Insane disrespect. Disrespect. There was only one respect <laughs> in this entire show, and it was in the intro video. And destroy the respect that we have spent years to establish. And then the main positive I have coming out of this is that I love this so much. I am now interested in watching WCW Thunder 2000 with Kevin Nash commentary. Because, hmm. I, you know, I want to hear it. I want to hear him talk more. Uh... Yeah. There we go. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I have the network. There's been a lot of people that said I was a horrible booker, but I've actually booked myself in the best angle of all time. I'm retired. And since you're paying me big money, they decided that they would put me on the broadcast team to try to recoup some of those funds. Well, that does it for this week, folks. I was going to do a regular wrap-up, but there is a high, high chance a Brucey bonus episode is hurtling into your future. What will it be? Find out next time on OSW. Or it's up right now on our Patreon, if you really can't wait and help us keep the lights on. Steve, where can they do that? NuggerU.OSWReview.com And you can watch all of our episodes. Fuck. Free of charge and an IMAX flavored four to three. Uh, that was just a lie. I just told you you couldn't see the episodes. <laughs> um, uh, and if you want to watch our hundred over a hundred and twenty episodes of OSW, you can at OSWReview.com or just YouTube because you're here right now. So that was a bit of a lie as well. But do it anyway. But you can. Yes, it is. It, it just links back to YouTube, <laughs> uh, so you can cut out the middleman if you really want. Yeah, just, just you know, just disregard what I said. So it's a goodbye from me. <laughs> Take a boo. Oh, is he? It is. And the two and a half time Golden Nogger Award winner, Jay Hunter. Year 13. We're going into year 13. We kicked off year 13. Here's to our teenage... Teenage... Teenage. Oh! Yeah. That, that's it. It's yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eject. <laughs> 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 and remember... A winner is you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>